Now, how about another movie review, Murray? Well, let's just cut to the chase. There will be some mild spoilers in this movie review. And you know what this is. This is the Joker, the Joker part two. So we know this is mixed and some people are very negative online, but here you go. Here are some initial reactions from us at Dead Films. Don't, don't even compare Boys Afraid to this. I will tell you this, this movie is a beautiful disaster. <laughs> that's that's how I define this movie because it's beautiful. It's good, it's good, it's a very good story, it's a unique story, but is this what we want? Is this what we really needed from the Joker? Is this even the fucking Joker? And Polly and Dennis will answer. So Mr. That, Dennis, it's very good to see you again. Thank you so much. Uh, so good to be back, back seeing the movies with the boys. Uh, so we just saw Joker fully uh, do. I don't speak French. I'm sorry to say. Yeah, no. Uh, my initial reaction, you got it in there. After the fi when this credit started rolling, I was just stunned for a few moments. I was just left thinking, wow, like there were so many questions, so much in my mind that was that I was just reflecting on, and there is just so much to discuss with this film. Uh, so much, so many incredible performances, beautiful cinematography, just very, very good, very brave as well uh, in, in, in certain creative choices. I don't even know where to start with this film. I did really enjoy it. I did really, really enjoy it. I will have to see it again to really, really, really form a full opinion of it but from first watch i understand why the film will be controversial i understand why some may not enjoy it it's it's definitely not what you might expect after having seen the first film but i think that it it jewels what the first film did in very interesting and ex unexpected ways it's not an expected sequel is it messy? It's a bit of a mess. Yes, it is. But it feels like the director's vision. I'm so glad he was able to do it, and I'm so glad that I could see it. But I'm gonna need more time with this movie. But I did really like it. I would recommend you go see it too. Form your own opinion. Don't listen to what the internet says. Form your own opinion, because this film has... It's garnered a lot of reactions, let's put it that way. I would say go see it for yourself form your own opinion. The first movie was about becoming the Joker. The second one was trying to comprehend what you have become. Try to comprehend what what it really means to be a Joker. Le Quinn, I still don't know what or Le Quinn was in this movie, but yeah. A very interesting movie. But still, I can give this. The musical, it was perfect. I went in to this movie like I did not expect anything. I actually almost went in expecting it to be an awful movie. And that made it so much more enjoyable. I, I love this movie. It's beautiful filmed. The music is wonderful. Even more wonderful than the first one. The musical parts, I see it more like Joker's mental health. Yes escalating and getting worse and worse for more musical, more dance and more uh, instruments in his mind just rumbling around and just getting more insane trying to comprehend what he has become. Yeah, but I would recommend it. I will see it again. What do you say, Polly? The first half of this movie was my cup of tea. I was really into what the tone was, the cinematography, the direction of all the scenes, the choreography on how you block the actors with the scenery, the devastation and the sadness for this guy, Arthur, in prison. His, let's say, his relationship with Brendan Gleeson, I thought was really well handled and well acted. I love that guy, Brendan Gleeson. He's a phenomenal actor. And Catherine Turner, I, I thought it was well portrayed. Acting aside, uh, um, second half, in some sense, has of course left me gutted. A lot of audience members will feel that way. 
Uh, the musical did not bother me. Uh, did not bother me like it will some other people. And oh, Dennis has to go. Yes, yes come yes, here, come here, come here, Dennis. I got, I got trams to catch. Thank you so much. Thank Dennis. you so much. We'll, we'll be in touch. Yeah. So, thank you, thank you for listening to our thoughts. Joker, baby. Bye, Kendrick. I gave him a hug. Bye. Death film show. It just for context, he was giving me signs uh, behind camera. I thought something had happened or that I, would, I had to like wrap something up here. Shades of Kubrick in this. There's shades of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest or A Clockwork Orange even. Like imagine Clockwork Orange, but you got the next part where they're examining him in court. But I think this is not really the tempo that uh, you're expecting from a sequel to the Joker, so it will be a shock to you because it just takes a slow approach. If you don't like courtroom dramas, you're not gonna like this movie. If you don't like prison movies, you're not gonna like this movie. I happen to like both of those, and uh, if you have compelling dialogue, if you have a really good case, it becomes spine tingling. Straight spoilers. All right, so here you're led to believe just like Harley that he's gonna get out of there because he is the Joker, right? But instead he he really cuts himself short and stops believing his own fantasy that I am this big persona and I am something more than just uh, the, the loser that he thought he was. This, 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 uh, this uh, lone guy uh, that nobody cared for, who nobody saw. And that becomes really sad. Like, this movie becomes a tragedy and you feel really, really bad for this whole situation, even though he killed people. Yeah, he did kill people in the first movie. You were led to understand his condition and, and you, you felt that sorrow of uh, the anti, not hero story, the villain story. And that's what compelled us. And like even in that courtroom scene when he's doing the big musical and bah, with, the, with the big club, I just imagine Batman jumping out from there and going, stop that Joker. So here's my theory. In the first movie, Bruce Wayne's like 10 years old and Joker's already much older. And here you see Harvey Dent being like a young guy. But since Harley becomes pregnant with Arthur's child and he is killed in prison by this other guy who's been probably idolizing him from from the distance and it seems like he's cutting himself up like Heath Ledger in the background there oh. uh, not entirely sure yeah. I believe that the child that Harley now is carrying probably is gonna be the Harley Quinn like the real Harley Quinn since she'll probably name her daughter Harley her name is Harley but they call her Lee so her child will become the, the Harley Quinn of this universe who can then meet this Joker who Please. killed Arthur in prison and they will meet the Batman who is still a kid later in the future. Just setting the whole universe, this universe that probably won't continue anyway. So that's how I'm trying to make sense of this as I left the cinema uh, just really devastated because of the sadness of the movie and, and just uh, the weird catharsis that it left me with. This is the most difficult movie review I've done on the spot like this because um, <sighs> I feel so many different things. That's tough. But I do admire them taking the big swings, sticking to their guts about it. I think that's, I give respect to that. But yeah, fantastic acting, uh, cinematography, through the roof. Uh, I was very inspired by that. But yeah, um, I feel so sad for Arthur. But that's my theory. I'll try and make sense of it in my head. And what if that's the guy who is the Joker and the Batman? But I don't know. People don't want to connect them, but when I don't know, yeah, yeah, it doesn't make sense. The way either way we look at it doesn't make sense. So James Gunn, fix this. I think that sums it up. Now that's life. That's life. Like all the people say. Ooh. Some people get their kicks by stomping a dream. And I'm not gonna let it ruin this review.